so today we will be going ahead with our chapter of data transformation i think last week i had stopped till arrange and today we'll continue with the other functions of uh, of deep layer okay so let me just start it here and we can walk through it together okay the first thing select select basically just selects uh, the columns according to our preference whatever we have written inside the function and it just subsets the entire data frame and gives an overview of what the columns contain it doesn't filter so it just gives an overview of these columns so yeah so this is the output for it and uh, so when i put this semicolon what it does is it selects all the columns uh, from year to day, including year and day. And if I put a negative sign here, it, it doesn't select year and day, it selects everything else from the data set. So the exclamatory uh, symbol also is a negation. So it gives a similar output. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to try it with another data set, the Palmer Penguins, that's why I uh, did it with this. So there's another helper function within select that starts with and ends with. So it's just that uh, the it has to select everything that starts with bill and ends with mm. So that will give this output and contains mm also will give the similar output because in this data set, these the outputs of both of these happen to be the same. So it means that in the data set, whatever column names that contain MM has to be uh, shown. So I was experimenting with this matches helper function and what it does. So I did it with the iris data set and this is what it gives. So what I understood it as that the output should be that it matches everything that contains PT and AL. Um, I just wanted some clarity on this if any one of you could give it to me. And I don't know why the same thing didn't work with the penguins data set. So this was something that I couldn't understand. If any one of you could clear it up, it would be great. I don't know. Is, is this a regular expression that's within quotes? Yeah, it is a, it is a regex. Yeah, okay. it is. Okay. So, so I, I didn't... Uh, yeah. So what are you trying to do here with Iris? So I was just trying to understand how the matches works. So I, I found this on stack and mm -hmm. they said that uh, whatever goes inside these uh, 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 brackets that goes as a regex and yes. essentially, yeah. essentially it matches everything that has the letters PP and A. That is what I understood it as. Is Correct. that what it does? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. So basically with Iris, I don't think it will select anything. Okay, but, so uh, yes. It no, I think it, it is selecting all the columns that has uh, this. So uh, I, I don't I don't understand why the same thing is not working with the Penguins data set. Uh, if, if all the columns that has uh, TH and MM as a regex, so... I, I, but I don't, I don't think you need here square brackets, right? I think uh, uh, we can anyway do it, right? Okay, so uh, where is so what you could do is th underscore mm, right? Yeah, if you use that, it takes all the like bill length mm, bill depth mm, all those columns. Okay, all right, all right, okay, okay, yes, okay. So uh, the, the regex is used for very specific uh, uh, applications where the column column names itself has a regex, a regex expression. So this will not help us right here. So in this case, I guess we don't need regex at all, right? Exactly. Because exactly. for example, we can use ends with with the same exactly. yeah. code. True, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So the next thing is rename. Rename is anyway, when we say rename, we can give the DF and then whichever column that has to be renamed and the new name that we need to give. So that will give us, that will rename the column 
And here we can see that the tail number is renamed and the underscore is removed. Okay, this everything function is something that I really liked. So what it, uh, so this is like, it brings whatever columns we have written up front. So, so we can have a better understanding of our data set. So time hour and air time is brought in the front and all the other columns are put after that. So are that you showing something else? We can just see your R screen now. I think you're referring to the everything function. Yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm running it and showing. Uh, no, I think this your screen is frozen for me at least. Yeah, yeah, I, me too. I okay. cannot. It's, oh, it's, is it? Yeah, yeah, I can. I am now seeing the Palmer Bank Penguins uh, snippet. Okay, okay. Let me just stop sharing and just do it again. Okay, can can you see it now? Yep. I'm I'm yep. I'm doing yeah, yes. okay, great. Okay, I'm at everything now. I think you can see me moving it and okay, great, great. Uh, so yeah, as I was saying, this was another uh, thing that I really liked. Um, so yeah, what this does is it just brings whatever column names that I've written up front and the rest of the data sets are uh, arranged in in the later uh, ways so it, it just gives us a better way of understanding uh, comparing and visually yields a better result um, okay now we are into the exercises uh, brainstorm as many ways as possible to select departure time departure delay arrival time and arrival delay from flights okay i think the most straightforward way is to just select and write all of the column names and that will give the desired result. And of course, the, the other way is contains, contains time and delay and does not contain schedule and air, air because time and delay, so I can just run it here. So when we select time and delay, all of these get selected, which is not required. So we have, we have to negate schedule and air time. So that will give us the desired output. And the other way is, of course, starts with and ends with, uh, starts with depth, ends with time and delay. Yep. So that will also give us the result out. Yeah. Uh, what happens your, if you, your screen has frozen again? I think. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. I think my net is not fine, or I don't know. I had a question on this one. So I think. Uh, so when we are not using dplyr, uh, another way of selecting columns is to pass on the uh, column numbers, right? So we can say that, okay, which of the columns, I mean, what is what is the column number for the specific uh, variable in my data, data frame? And let's say, for example, I want the second, fourth and eighth column. I can pass on those numbers and do a subset. I was wondering if dplyr has a similar method. I, I tried doing it, but it uh, oh. didn't work. Do any of you guys have any idea? Oh, okay. No, I haven't. I generally just yeah. use column names, so. Yeah, you can do the same with select as well, right? You can pass in column numbers in select. Really? Yeah, yeah, it works. Oh. Uh, so I just say select. You can use select one two. colon three. You can do select one oh, comma three. Oh, just, okay, okay, okay. I was trying, okay, okay. Yeah, this works. This works. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. I don't know what I was trying. Anyways, yeah, this is working. Thank you. Okay, great. I think then we can move ahead. I, 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 I hope you guys can see my screen properly now. Mm. No, I, I can me. see that now actually. Yeah, me too. Oh, my uh, word. <laughs> the Zoom I screen. I don't know. I <laughs> okay, let but me. Although your voice is clear and. Uh, yeah, I don't know why this is happening. Is it okay now? Uh, yes, for now, yes. Okay, just, just give me a heads up whenever it uh, doesn't work. Uh, Okay, the next question is what happens if you include the name of variable multiple times in select call? 
ओके आई थिंक दिस डजंट रियली मैटर इट जस्ट टेक्स इट वंस इट इग्नोर्स द रिपीटेड वेरिएबल नेम यप या व्हाट डज एनी ऑफ फंक्शन डू व्हाई माइट इट बी हेल्पफुल इन कंजंक्शन विद दिस वेक्टर ओके सो दिस 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 वेक्टर कॉल्ड वार्स एंड एनी ऑफ जस्ट looks at everything in the vector and if everything of it satisfies then all of it is selected uh so that is what it does and what all of does is as i have understood is that it has to satisfy each and every variable name if even one of it doesn't satisfy in the data set then it throws up an error any of uh, doesn't do that if any one of it is satisfied then it is fine so that is what those functions do and um Okay. Does the result of running the following code surprise you? How do the select helpers deal with case by default? Okay. So we just it it is not case sensitive, and when we say ignore false, then it throws up an error. Okay. I think um, is my screen fine now? You guys can see yes. it, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So the next function is mutate. Uh, okay for this we are subsetting the entire flights data set to a smaller data set so that we can actually view the columns that has been mutated so mutate what it does is it add the separate column for whatever uh, function whatever operations that we are doing so here uh, gain and speed are added as a separate column to the main data set mm -hmm. and that is what mutate does and we can also refer to the newly added columns and further do analysis on that so that is what this code is doing where we have newly added a column gain here and upon that we are doing further analysis for to understand the data set better so that is what mutate does okay so transmute transmute also does a similar thing but what it does is does is it drops all the other uh, columns and it just keeps whatever we have uh, whatever formulas we have put inside the function mm -hmm. so that is what it does um yeah tran transmute also yeah the modular functions are anyway yeah we can put it in to split it to hour and minute okay this lead and lag was a little confusing for me uh so what i understand lead and lag is uh, that it gives it gives me an understanding of what the variable is uh, or, or the value is according to a certain variable the previous value and the preceding value so that is what i understand it as uh, lead and lag so there is also a exercise that comes later which is specific to lead and lag i think we can discuss about that then so I, that is what it does so when we arrange it uh, for each of the variable name the preceding and the previous uh, value is given according to lead and lag mm, okay so the cumulative functions is yeah the cumulative sum can be uh, calculated and the mean and yeah the ranking functions i think each of the um, whatever is there in in the data set it is ranked so here uh, we can see that so each of this if the numbers or if the variables are repeated then it gets a particular uh, rank which is it it gets it gets the same rank so here uh, we can so here this is descending we have ranking it in a descending order and uh, and the first one is otherwise um i didn't get more clarity on what all of the other ranks do so if any one of you have idea on that that would be great i don't know what dense rank does or cumulative distance does and what is the application of it so percent rank is okay i think it just gives the according to the position it gives the ranking for each of the variable i don't really know what dense rank and uh, cumulative distance does and what is the application of it i saw row number which was so it, so the difference between row number and min rank was that row number would always assign unique ranks yes so yes yes if, yes yeah so right. it, so the difference is so one way of looking at it is uh, at the differences is how they break ties you know for example okay uh, yeah 
in min rank in this example uh, since hmm. two appears twice uh, yeah. it would be ranked as two and then the yeah. the function would move on uh, yes. uh, but then row number would uh, look at these two and assign the first to a better rank because it appears like before first, in the yeah. sequence yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay but yeah. i don't know about the tens rank yeah even i couldn't um... Okay, I think we we we'll just keep it for another. Uh, we, we can get back to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we are in the exercises. Uh, currently, departure time and scheduled departure time are convenient to look at, but hard to compute with because they're not really continuous numbers. Convert them to a more convenient representation of numbers or number of minutes since midnight. Okay, so yeah, this is. Uh, again, we'll be using the mutate function here. So here I'm converting hours into minutes, this part, and here in, I'm dividing by 100 to get the minutes. So yeah, I think uh, departure time mid is my column min. Yeah, so this will convert it uh, and give it to me the number of minutes since midnight. So there, there's another way to do it. We can also create a function that will ease in it definitely. Functions will. So I, I can just put this function and do it for schedule time, schedule departure time also. So mm. I need not write the entire formula here. Mm. So that will ease in and give me the desired output. Uh, OK. Uh, compare air time with arrival time minus departure time. What do you expect to see? What do you see? Okay, I think it should be like air time is uh, equal to arrival minus departure time. Mm. Uh, so let's just see. But it isn't so. The, it, uh, there is some difference with both of them. So I don't really know why that is. Uh, maybe it is because of uh, how we have converted the departure time is uh, sometimes after midnight and arrival time is not so. Maybe the difference is because of that. I don't really know. Um, so I think here, uh, when we do arrival time minus departure time, both of them are like yeah. in 24 hour format. So yeah. what we, so this gives very different results, but when we convert arrival underscore time into, you know, minutes since, uh, midnight as we yeah. did in the previous example okay okay and then subtract the two newly computed variables it gives very yeah. comparable results oh okay all right okay okay so because this is in uh 24 hour format the, 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 there's, yeah. there's a discrepancy yeah okay yeah. Okay. okay okay great great okay so I'll just rework on that. Okay. Uh, compare departure time, schedule departure time and departure delay. How would you expect those three numbers to be related? Okay. I think this is also related similarly to the previous question. And uh, yeah, we can. Okay. Here I have uh, converted two minutes and uh, done it. Yeah. So here there are some of some which doesn't agree. So majorly it is agreeing majorly uh, it, it, both of them are similar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Find the 10 most delayed flights using ranking function. How do you want to handle ties? Okay, carefully read the documentation for min rank. Okay, so yeah, so I just did a min rank uh, mm -hmm. descending, it's sorting descending uh, for the arrival delay. And uh, delay greater than, where the rank is less than 10, according to whatever the question requires. Mm. So that this will give me the output. Yeah, so the 10 most delayed flights. Mm. Okay, what does uh, 1, 2, 3 plus 1, 2, 10 return? Why? Okay, I think, yeah, this it does this because the length of both of them is not same and one, two, three is reiterated to the entire length and it's added again and again. So that is why this, this is the output. Okay, what trigonometric functions does R provide? Okay, so these are all the trigonometric functions and mm. yeah, so that can be used according 
to whatever the need arises. Okay, so the next function is summarize. So summarize uh, it, it it does it it gives a summary of every whatever we need to know and it gives in a single column. So it, it again it gives a better understanding of the data. Uh, so here what we are doing is we are getting a mean of the departure delay. Yeah, so this gives the entire the, the entire data set of flights the mean of the departure delay. Uh, so yeah, NARM is it just removes all the NA values. Yeah, this is the mean of the arrival delay. Uh, yeah, group by is another uh, function where we can uh, group by according to the columns, uh, whatever we want. So the entire flights data set will be grouped according to year, month and day. And further, we can uh, do the analysis on that. So here, uh, the by day is grouped according to your month and day, and then according to each day, I, I'm getting a mean delay. So that is what this does. So uh, for each day, what is the delay in the first month, etc. So my, I had a question actually. Yes. So how does, I mean, how, how does R know? So when we are doing a summarize line, the second line, how does R know that, you know, it has to summarize by day and not by month or year? Uh, because we grouped by all three of them, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, so does the order of that year, month, day, is, is that picked by summarize in some, some way? I don't know. No, it, it summarizes by year, month, and day, all three, right? I don't think it summarizes only by year or day. Uh, how, how yeah, I think, work? yeah, I think that is correct. Uh, so here for the first month in this day, yeah. whatever, whatever amount of flights I've had, this is the delay. So, so on and so forth. So I don't oh, think it is. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, what if so in this data set there is only one year? Uh, so so it's yeah, yeah, it is only 2013. Yes. So my question is if we had like more years, hmm. how would summarize then would have taken care of that? Yeah, then you would have like for example, after this 365 rows, your 366th row would be 2014, one and one, exactly. one month hmm. and one day. Hmm. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Yeah, I think if we want to do the way you are saying, we would we would have to filter the data set, and already create a data set for days only, and then or group by separately by days, and then do it, because this is giving uh, for each of the variable that we have given. So, yeah, I uh, think. Can you press on like page two or? Two or three uh, in the in the table that was generated right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. What's next? Okay. After See, one, yeah. two starts. Okay. Two, hmm. Yeah. 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 That's why it has three sixty five Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, so the next part is um, it's it's showing how we can how the coding or how the workflow is easens with the pipe operator with uh, so i think it's really amazing pipe operator so yeah so here uh, we are first we're grouping it we are creating a variable and we're grouping it by destination and then we're doing a summarize for delay by destination we're uh, computing the mean of distance and arrival delay so there are a lot of variables that are involved here so in pipe Operator, we can just put it put everything at at once, and uh, we can get out the output, which is really nice. Okay. Um, delay is not found. Okay. okay. Okay, so this was just a graph of distance and delay. So it, it's reducing as the distance is increasing. So 
I think I assume that most of the delays are, if the distance is more, then most of the delays are uh, overcome in the air time. So maybe that is what it. Um, yeah, so now we are at the exercises. Uh, brainstorm at least five different ways to assess the typical delay characteristics of a group of flights. Okay, so what I understood this is uh, they're just trying, uh, th they're asking us to just come out with different methods to understand how the uh, delay is, how is it structured. So I came up with a way of grouping it by hour and uh, getting the mean mean delay per hour. And uh, another way is flights delayed by origin. So I grew by origin. And uh, yeah, so, and I got the sum of delay, arrival delay according to origin. So I think uh, if any one of you have other methods which you have solved this exercise with, we can share it or talk about it. If, if any. Oh, I don't have anything. Okay, okay. Um, okay. A flight is 15 minutes early 50% of the time and 15 minutes late 50% of the time. Okay, so here we are grouping by flight. And uh, we are, okay, so here uh, arrival delay, the sum of arrival delay less than 15. So for 15 minutes and uh, divided by the total number. And I'm filtering uh, the columns where early uh, is equal to 0.5, late 0.5 for this part where it's early 50% of the time and mm. late 50% of mm. the time. Nice. Uh, yeah, so this will give me the output of it. And the same thing happens with uh, the next question also with 30 minutes late. So here I'm just changing the arrival de delay to 30. The mm. rest of it is all same. So yeah, this will give me the output of it. And again, this is also same. 99% of the time my fl a flight is uh, on time and 1% of the time it is two hours late. So on time will be less than or equal to zero and two hours late is one, greater than or equal to 120. And yeah, so that is giving me the output here. Okay, nice. come up with another approach that will give you the same output as not cancelled count destination and not cancelled count tail number without using count. Okay, let us just see what this output gives. Okay, so without using count, I did a group by destination and did a summarize. Group by and summarize. So here for the second one, I so here what a weight distance. So I gave it inside uh, the sum, sum by distance. So that will give me, yield me the same output. Okay. Uh, what was that yeah. sum of N, the, the second last line, the, the, yeah. This one? Yeah. So sum of count, is, is that yeah. slightly different than just count? No, no actually I think it would it give you the, the same. same output if you remove yeah. sum. Yeah, yeah. I also, yeah. yeah. Sum is redundant here, right? Yes, sum is redundant. Yes. Okay, our definition of cancel flights uh, is any departure delay or is any arrival delay is slightly suboptimal. Why? Uh, which is the more uh, important column? Okay, I didn't really understand why it is suboptimal. And I think the most important column is arrival delay because I think even if the flight has a delay in departure, it can make up in the air and uh, get on time. So I think the more most important column is arrival delay. And I didn't really understand why it is suboptimal. I, 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 I don't get it. Yeah, because it's using two variables instead of one. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I think so. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> okay, so we just have to keep one of it and not use both when we're looking at cancelled flights. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. That was simple anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, look at the number of cancelled flights per day. Is there a pattern? Is 
is the proportion of cancelled flights related to average delay okay so here i'm grouping it by day and summarizing it um, yeah cancelled flights and uh, mean of the arrival delay yeah so this is the output and uh, okay so as i have understood it it's uh, like is there a pattern or anything so here uh, the cancel flights is the uh, largest here and the mean of arrival delay is also more so as i have understood it uh, uh, in in the initial initial uh, starting month there are more delays in the flight or there are more cancel flights uh, i don't know probably that is what uh, it means or in the month mid month there there are a lot of cancellations of flights mm. uh, that could be a pattern of course we we the better way to understand is of course to plot it maybe and get a better understanding mm -hmm. which i couldn't do if any one of you have have a better solution to this then we can surely discuss it I did not do this the last two exercises today, <laughs> okay, but this no, is very interesting. Yeah, yeah I guess this if we is... just plot it, right? We will see the trends. Like for example, how in different months the delay increase. So maybe it is expected when it's snowy, right? So it is expected the oh. delay would be more something based yeah. on seasons. I guess mm. if okay. we just plot them, it would be obvious. Yeah. 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 That is true. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, we can move to the next question. Which carrier has the worst delays? Uh, challenge. Can you distinguish the effects of bad airports versus bad carriers? Why? Why not? Okay, this was a little. Uh, I, I. Okay, so the first question: Which carrier has the worst delays? So group by carriers, and again, I I took a mean, and yeah, it gives me the carrier with, with the worst delay. but i couldn't work my way through uh, can you distinguish the effects of bad airports versus bad carriers so uh, i think a lot of factors are involved when you say bad airports so what are they actually meaning is it uh, with respect to delays in the airport or the distance that it has or the accessibility i, I didn't really understand i think what they're asking is uh, maybe we can group by or origin so origin tells us what was the origin originating uh, airport for the flight okay so if we can group by uh, that airport and see some trend then that means that the fault is majorly because of the airport so maybe their clearing stations are not you know so well equipped or something like that Okay, so what will you be plotting it with origin and uh, mean delay? Yeah, yeah, origin. Okay. So group group by origin maybe, and then look at yeah. mean delay. And then here you have group by carriers and looked at mean delay. So if there is, yes, yeah, I don't know if if there is. I mean, if we can't find a pattern here, maybe we find a pattern with origin. Oh, know. all right. Okay, so that is okay. Okay, so that will give us a answer to this. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. What does the sort argument to count do? When might you use it? Okay. I think sort prove will uh, sort it in the descending order, and uh, is that it or? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So that will we we can use it when when whenever we need to see it in the descending. Wait. Okay. Uh, which 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 plane or tail number has the worst on time record? Okay. So on time record, I I just did a sum of arrival delay, which is less than or equal to zero, and arranged it in descending. Yeah. So this will give me the plane which has the worst on time record. Okay. What time of day should you fly if you want to avoid delays as much as possible? Okay. So I grouped by time hour and took a mean of uh, arrival delay. Yeah. So again, I think we can even for this. I think we can uh, plot it 
and then we can uh, it will give us a very obvious result of what time of the day we should fly if we have to uh, avoid delays yeah so here this uh, i just grouped it by hour and did it and it it, it gave a similar output uh, so i i think we can use either one of them if we want to understand what time of the day we need to what time of the day will have the least amount of delays we can group by either one of the columns and the result will be what we need okay for each destination compute the total minutes of delay for each flight compute the proportion of total delay uh, for its destination okay so here i have grouped it by destination and flight and the total delay yeah this is the total delay for uh, each each of the flight and uh, compute the proportion of the total delay for its destination i i, I didn't really understand what it meant uh, I, 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 okay. does do any one of you have any idea of it i i just thought we can just uh, compute the total delay according to destination and flight is there something so i think it? yeah i think they are asking for another column which calculates uh, this total delay divided hmm. by the sum of delay sum. for a particular destination okay okay so okay, okay. for example the first destination is if let's say abq is albuquerque so it yeah. so, so for the first row it's asking 605 by 605 plus 508 Oh, all right. Okay, okay, I got it. Okay. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, delays are typically temporarily temporarily correlated. Even once the problem that caused the initial delay has been re resolved, later flights are delayed to allow earlier flights to leave. Okay. Yeah. Use lag ex uh, to explore the delay of flight is related to the delay of immediately preceding flight. Okay. Yes. so mm. here um, yeah i we mutated and added a separate column called lag and here yeah delay lag and departure delay is selected and uh, yeah i have omitted all the nas and i did a correlation of uh, delay lag and departure delay mm. so uh, here i've just done it uh, for one i think if i increase it we can see that the correlation is less is decreasing so uh, what i understood is if the uh, delay is increasing then they have uh, they have more time to make make up the delay in air time so the correlation between uh, correlation is decreasing so that is what i understood it as uh, if you any one of you have any inputs it's Um, we can discuss so also maybe there is like a optimal delay that so maybe at 5 yes. days the after 5 days the correlation is the highest and then it decreases or something like probably that. yes yes yeah. that that could also be a one of yeah surely yeah okay so the last three questions i couldn't uh, find my way uh, i couldn't find a solution for it if any one of you have solved it then we can discuss it uh yeah the next question is look at each destination can you find flights that are suspiciously fast uh or uh, compute the air time of a flight related to the shortest flight to that destination which flights were most delayed in air so i couldn't uh i couldn't understand how to go about it if any one of you have solved this then i think we can <laughs> we can do it or uh i couldn't find a solution for th these three questions um, or or we can even discuss how to go about it and we can solve it ourselves and discuss in the next uh, meeting anything is okay yeah that sounds good i think for the sixth one i think uh, one way could be to calculate speed uh, so we have distance and we have time taken okay uh, so we yes, can yes. Uh, divide distance by total time taken and get at speed and then uh, if if there is uh, an outlier in that vector we would mm. know that 
you know the average speed okay. is way way high or way low or something like that so then we will we would have to group we would have to take in consideration the origin and destination also right because for each of them uh, the speed might differ so uh, that that should should that also be taken into consideration when we're doing this hmm i think speed should have like a more or less a, a range uh, okay you respect yeah. you know yeah it should not be like too too broad of a range but that's okay. my guess i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think yeah we can we can explore that definitely uh okay so how uh, which flights were most delayed in air i think that that will give a, that's a very straightforward question i don't think that is that is related to this um okay i think we can walk through it and discuss it next next week that that is fine uh find all destinations that are flown at least uh, by two carriers use that information to rank the carriers um wow okay so here is it like we group by uh, destination and we group by uh, carrier and then count uh, the destination which the common destination of each of the carriers is that how it works yeah or maybe just group by uh, destinations and then there was this function which we did last time count unique right or and distinct uh, yeah unique. and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so use that yeah. and and uh, i guess yeah that is a good approach we can group by destination and count number of unique carriers in each carriers. Yeah. for each destination and yeah. then so okay. and rank it accordingly so if, if there are like a destination with 10 carriers then that would be ranked as one like yeah. whichever is the highest and then rank accordingly yeah yeah, yeah. okay yes yes okay great yeah for each plane count the number of flights before the first delay of greater than 1 hour okay um oh wow interesting yeah <laughs> for each plane count the number of flights before the first delay of greater than 1 hour okay so so i guess for each plane i guess it's carrier right plane yeah is... plane is carrier and yeah yes so we have to find out how many flights flew before there was a delay of 1 hour right mm -hmm. yes yes okay yeah so uh, we will we will have a group by carrier and then we'll have a summarize uh, next which is less than 60 minutes and and then that would and then we count the number of whatever satisfies this condition is right. that so how find out yeah i guess that is correct find out the index where the delay was greater than 1 hour mm -hmm. so let's mm -hmm. say for each carrier you have 100 rows and mm -hmm. at 60 you arrange it basically by time mm -hmm. yes. like at 60th position you have that delay greater than 1 hour so i guess the answer should be 59 then right so before that how many flights flew right right yes like yes. that Yeah. Yes. Oh okay. Okay yeah that that makes sense. Yes. Okay yeah great. Yeah I think we can work through it and discuss our outputs in the next uh meeting. Okay. Yeah so that is so that is what I had to share today. I'll just stop sharing my screen. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I think we're done with the data transformation chapter. Uh thank you so much for supporting and uh, I think for the next week, uh, Arna, uh, uh, you would you be okay to do it? I think you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Class. yeah great. So for next week, we have workflow scripts and EDA, right? Yes. So uh, yeah, workflow scripts and maybe half of EDA. Yeah, just like how yeah we can split it and do it. No issues. No issues at all. Perfect. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Deepti. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Deepti. <laughs> Yeah thank you thank Thanks. you everybody bye. see you have a great day yeah bye, bye. you too bye, -bye.